A tree control lets you build visual hierarchical structures like this directory tree. In this tutorial I will explain how to build this app using WX widgets and C++. We will talk about using std file system to traverse directories, avoiding potential traps when dealing with strings in Windows, correct handling of icons, and much more. Stay tuned until the end, where I will provide exercises to transform this simple app into a fully functional code editor. Let's begin. Here's a basic WX widgets app. We have the application object and a WX frame subclass representing our main window. Adding a tree control is quite simple. First, we need to include the correct header, then declare our tree control variable. Since we'll be using it from various methods of the frame class, we declare it as a member. The actual setup in the constructor is pretty simple. Normally, we would have to add a sizer to ensure correct layout, but if we have just one control, WX widgets does it for us. We only need to add some sample items to our tree. Every tree needs a single root element. Then we can add child items in any configuration we want. We only need to provide the parent ID as the first argument here. And we can expand any branch again by providing the node ID. This is how it looks like, a native tree control with basic user interaction. Our final layout will include a button to open a folder. This time we do need a sizer, because WX widgets won't know how to position our controls. This is where WX sizer flags make things much clearer. Instead of a bunch of hard to remember numbers, we can write code that almost reads like English. We tell the tree to take up all the available space by giving it a proportion of 1. And for the button, we just use the default settings, which means just be as big as you need to be. The result is that the tree stretches vertically to fill the window, while the button keeps a fixed height. Border is an easy way to add a reasonable margin around the control without using magic numbers and density-independent pixel conversions. Finally, expand will stretch the control along the axis perpendicular to the sizer's direction, and center will center it. This lets us maintain the correct layout even when changing the window proportions. It's time to deal with the file system now. We include the standard modern C++ header for that and create a shortcut for the namespace. Here we have two helper methods. Populate tree will be called recursively to list the directory provided in the first parameter and call itself for any subfolders it encounters. Open folder will do basic UI setup and call populate tree. We want it as a separate method as opposed to simply putting that code in the button's callback because we will call it also when the application starts to fill the tree with the contents of the current directory. And getting the current directory will be our first use of the file system library. Note that we use error code here. In general, the functions in the std file system namespace can either throw exceptions or, if provided with an error code output variable, return the error instead. In this example, we'll use error codes where possible and stay away from exceptions. As I mentioned before, we call open folder first in the constructor to populate the tree with the current directory contents. We also call open folder in the button's click callback. We show system specific folder selection dialog and forward the selected path to the open folder method if the user clicked OK. Don't get too attached to this string conversion here. It is not 100% correct and I will explain later how the right invocation should look like and why. Now the open folder function. We delete all the items from the tree, preparing for new data. I found that calling refresh and update is useful for clearing the UI on Windows, so we do that here. Then we add the root item, again the string conversion is not entirely correct, and call populate tree, which is empty for now. This is the functionality so far. Clicking open folder brings up a standard directory chooser dialog. This dialog will look native to the operating system we compiled our app for, regardless if it's Linux, Windows or Mac. Now our first attempt at the heart of this app, the populateTree function. The directory iterator is our friend. 
it allows us to enumerate all the items in a given path, but without recursively going into subfolders. We will do that manually after adding our directory item to the tree. If the entry is a directory, we add it and then recurse into it. But if it's not, we add it to the tree as a file without any recursion. Now, what if the isDirectory call itself fails? In that case, we can't trust its result, so we play it safe and don't add anything to the tree. We just ignore the error and move on. OK, so this actually works now. We have folders, which are expandable, and regular files, which aren't. Or maybe these are empty folders. Let's add some icons to find out. To use default icons provided by WX widgets, we need an art provider. To assign icons to the tree items, we will need icon IDs, which we declare as constant members. We set the image collection for the tree using set images. A word of caution here. You might see some old code using set image list here, but that solution does not work well with high DPI displays. The correct way is to use bitmap bundles, which provide different image sizes for different screen densities, and then call set images, which accepts a vector of these bundles. The order is important here. In the class declaration, we set folder ID to 0 and file ID to 1. As you can see, the folder icon bundle is added first to our vector, so it gets index 0. The file icon is added second, so it has index 1. It is important for the order to match our defined IDs because we use that IDs everywhere we add a tree item now, when adding the root, a directory or a file. Our little app looks much better with icons, but we do have a problem. Actually more than one problem, we'll get to that later, but the one immediately apparent is that the items appear in random order. The directory iterator does not care about the order of the items. We have to do the sorting ourselves. Here is a cool way to do it. Use sorted set from the standard library. When constructing the set, provide the folders directory iterator as the first argument, empty iterator, which always returns the end iterator, as the second argument, and the comparator function as the third. The comparator function should return true if A should come before B. We want to sort the items by name, but we want the folders to have priority over files. So we check if A is a folder and if B is a folder. If one is and the other isn't, we want to return true if A is a folder, because it should come first. If A is not a folder, we return false, which is the value of this exact constant. If both items are folders, or both are files, we sort them alphabetically, comparing the names. Finally, we iterate over our sorted set, instead of using the directory iterator directly. This way our ordering issue is fixed, but that's not the end of our problems. There is the Unicode issue I mentioned before. Our string conversion approach is not entirely correct, and it's very easy to crash the app on Windows, by opening a folder with a weird name. To understand this, we need to talk about encodings. Windows uses UTF-16, so in order to construct a WX string from a path, we need to use WString method. W stands for white encoding, the format that is used on Windows. We do the same for the opposite conversions. If WXMSW is defined, we convert string to a white standard string. Since the return type of the function is fspath, C++ will automatically call a path constructor that accepts white strings. These helper functions should be used every time we pass a string between WX widgets and stud file system. And now our app works flawlessly. Well, almost. If we open a large folder, we can see that the app freezes completely during the directory traversal. This is definitely not a good user experience. We want the app to remain responsive at all times. There are various approaches to this, 
the most professional is to use WX Progress Dialog. I explained this in my Dialog tutorial, so be sure to check it out. Here, however, we opt for something simpler. We will block the Open Folder button, show a busy cursor, and call WX Yield to allow the framework to process UI events while we add new tree entries. Here's how to do it. First, they include. We need WX Utils for the busy cursor. In the open folder method, we simply create a busy cursor object. It will change the cursor in the constructor and change it back in the destructor. Since this is a local variable, the destructor will be called automatically at the end of the function. Next, we disable open folder button and enable it after the populate tree call finishes. Finally, we call WX yield when looping through the directory entries. Now everything works smoothly. The app is processing stuff in the background and we can interact with the window. There are other ways to improve this application. I encourage you to watch my shader toy tutorial where I explain WX style text control and build a simple OpenGL shader compiler with it. Adding a text control here would turn this app into a minimal and functional code editor, let's say almost as good as VS Code. If you are talking about opening and closing files or documents, we have to mention the whole WX document infrastructure. I have a tutorial on that as well, be sure to check it out. Now go ahead and fork the repository linked in the description and try to add these two functionalities. Be sure to post links to your finished work in the comments and good luck! I'll see you in the next one.